Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Those are fire family. Amen. I'm yeah. Minister Isaiah Robinson, and we're going to go into prayer right now. Amen. Father God, our Lord and Savior, Father, I thank you for gathering us here again this evening, Father God, for your spiritual word, Father God. Father God, I pray that things will please on you tonight, for you tonight, Father God, that all your soldiers will join in it and make a happy sound, Father God, a pleasing sound, Father God, that reaches up to you, Father. Father God, thank you for the rest period we had, Father God, that it rejuvenated us, Father God. Though we were resting, you was always on our mind and our heart and our soul, Father God. So, Father God, I ask you to be with us this night. I ask you to be with our, our pastor, Teresa, Tini, Father God. That you could be, you to be with her and her family, as always, you put us, Father God. As you be with her the pains and the illness and the things she's going through her body, Father God, that you continue to put your ever healing hands on her body, Father God. You, that you touch the minds and the hearts of the doctors that she so sees on it. On, on, on appointment dates, Father God. Yes, God. Thank for her, Lord, and let her know everything's going to be all right in your name. There's Thank no you. reason to feel down because you're uplifting God. So, Father God, if you continue to be this soldier and strengthen her, Father God. Thank that you, strong Lord. soldier that delivers your words, Father God, that touch others, Father God, with your word, with a strong sword, Father God. And <laughs> Father God, you be with her brother, Father God, as he continue his healing process, yes, Father God. God. That you be with the family, Father God, to comfort him and be with him, Father God. And yes, God. With him, Father God, in your name, Father God. Okay. Father God, I know he's going to be all right because you, you are a healing God, Father God. Father yes, God, just hold this young man, Father God, heart grows towards you, Father God, that he feel the prayers that are coming through this family, Father God, towards him, Father God, that he knows that you are there for him, Father God. That you continue to strengthen my sister and her family, Father God. Each and every one of them in the family, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I comfort them and touch them, Father God. Let's continue to strengthen our sister, to strengthen our leader, Father God. Precious sister, Father God. So I ask you to be with her, Father God. But Father God, I ask you to be with Apostle Robin, Father God. Yes, God. I told you, Father God, who who got a plate full and she's a strong, she's a strong, strong soldier, Father God. Whatever plate on her plate, she can lift it up, Father God. No place yes. to have her, Father God. And Father God, I ask you to be with her as she goes to a other little things she's going through physically, Father God, and the things that she may be dealing with at home or and around where she lives at, Father God, with be a family or friends, Father God. Actually, that she continues to be that strong soldier, Father God. That when she gets pushed back, she stands back up and pushed forward, Father God. And she delivers the words for your sheep, Father God. That she continue to touch people with that kind heart of hers, Father God. But also discipline with that stern whip she also can carry to that, Father God. So actually to be with her and continue to push her forward, Father God. A passionate sister, Father God, so I you to be with her, Father God, and the things she may be doing, Father God. You already know what she needs, Father God. So that's actually the thing to listen to her and be the strength for her and guide and uplift her, Father God. Father God, actually be with Elder Bud, Father God. Actually, you continue to strengthen him and lead him on the right path, Father God, that true soldier, that true lover of yours, Father God. Man of the Bible, Father God, the man of chapters, my, my Father God, the man of the people, Father God. Yes, Lord. Be with him and his help, Father God, and as you continue to reach out to people, Father God, mm -hmm. to touch their heart and deliver your message, your word, Father God, as he preached the word of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, that he probably, as he tried to gather the sheep in, Father God, though he might have difficult days, Father God, keep that soldier continue fighting, Father God, so he even goes through an illness and through his tiredness, Father God. He still find time for the people around him, Father God, to preach your word, Father God. So I have to be with him, Father God. Father God, she's with a minister rose, Father God. That she be strong and that thing she's doing on tonight, yes, Father yes. God, and be pleasing in your sight, Father God. That she deliver the word wherever she may be, wherever she may go, wherever she may come, Father God. That continue in your word, Father God. That strong prayer warrior, Father God. We pray that great that's done yesterday, Father God. We pray that they touch you. Heart, mind, soul, Father God. Father God, just to ask you to be with her and her help. Thank her, Father God. Be with her family members, Father God. Be with her aunt, Father God. We have to make the transition to a nursing home, Father God. As, she, as our minister shows her support and talks on a daily basis, Father God, ask you to continue to be with her, Lord. And Father God, I ask you to be with me, Father God, and 
Just continue with me on my journey, Father God. Just uphold, uphold me, Father God, when the attacks come, Father God, that I continue to push forward, Father God, that I reach out to your sheep, Father God. Father God, I pray that something that can be said tonight, Father God, for anyone in the family, anyone who's on the line, that something be said, Father God, that be education or spiritual strength, Father God, that we touch your heart and mind, Father God, to the listen, Father God. Father God, I just ask you to be with your Father God and to touch my tongue, that I say the right thing, that I deliver the words the way you want to, that be will pleasing to you, Father God. So I say this, Father God, in your son, precious name, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. My thing is on me. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, family. Thank you, social media. Who, who's out there? Join us today. Uh, y'all haven't heard from us in a while. We had to take a spiritual break, but we was always we always had y'all in our minds and our heart, and God was with us too. And um, I just ask you, just um, thank you for joining us on the day, and I pray that something pleasing to your ears and your minds and your hearts and your souls on the day. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to go to my scripture reading. I'm going to introduce myself again. I'm, I'm Isaiah, Minister Isaiah Robinson. I'll be a teacher on tonight. Pop is rich and wealthy. Chapters, readings are James 5, 1 through 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Beware, the rich can lead to pride and arrogance. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 9. These I be fools and deny thee, say, who is the Lord? At least I'll be poor. Still, and take the name of God in vain. Proverbs 28, 27. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters. The ones who remember that the, we, um, last time I was on, we talked about rich and rich. It's the rich, the wealthy and the rich. And we discussed um, the changes, and how does it change our attitudes being wealthy and uh, being rich. How we have what have we changed, have our family changed. So so we still be on the topic. So I want y'all to know they always that those questions again. But I'd like to get a um a reading first. What's up a reader for James five um, chapter James chapter five six two six James, excuse me James chapter five one through six. Okay. I'll read that. Amen. James 5, 1 and 6. 1 through 6. I had to switch computers because the other thing was acting up. So I got my Bible here. Amen for the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. Where would we be without Him? Yes, God. Okay. Going to the book of James. Okay, just bear with me, everybody. Reading for the new, I don't know. We'll find out. It just went away. Anyway, uh, James. Hold on. James. uh, James, James 5. Okay. Bear with me, everybody, please. Amen. Take your time. Check on. Yeah. James 5. Okay, James 5. James. Hey, man, I'm Come sorry. On. Sorry, somebody just stopped banging on the door. I apologize. I didn't hear anything. Look for the book of James here. Dog, where you at? Five, I'll get it here in a minute. You want to do this second scripture? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'll ahead. do James 5, 1 through 6, okay, and then your ahead. next one. Um, yeah, go ahead and set up then, Brother Boone. Okay. James 5, right. 1 through 6, the Amplified Version says, Come quickly now, you rich who lack true faith and hoard and misuse your resources. Weep and howl over them miseries, the woes, the judgments that are coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and is ruined and your fine clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. You have stored up your treasure in the last days when it will do you no good. Look, 
the wages that you have fraudulently withheld from the laborers who have mowed your fields are crying out against you for vengeance. And the cries of the harvester have come to the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. On the last ver um, verse five, on the earth, you have lived luxuriously and abandoned yourselves to soft living and led a life of wanton pleasures, self-indulged, self-gratification. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. Last verse, you have condemned and have put to death the righteous man. He offers you no resistance. Wow. James 5 verses 1 through 6. Amen. Do I have another verse to that or I continue on? You want me to go further? Yes. Okay. Oh, I can go to the next one. Verse, uh, okay, verse seven. So wait patiently, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits expectantly for the precious harvest from the land, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So can anybody answer what they get, tell me what they can get out of that, certain, that chapter there? Anybody? Somebody else can probably help me with the hands. Pastor Teresa. Okay, when I have just read James chapter 5, verse 1 through 7, which speaks about the misuse of the riches and your exhortation towards God, some of you out there, social media and, and in the virtual classroom, when you have an opportunity, and there are many opportunities because of just how the times are, to you we some people and most of us desire more number one than we can handle and so god's word is letting us know that for those that are rich and without him because it says in verse one come quickly now you rich who lack true faith and hoard and misuse your resources god has allowed you to have many resources but many of you out there misuse it for your selfish gratification or to get, you know, to puff yourself up, but never for the motive to bring God glory and honor, you know. And that is why he said that the woes and the judgments that are coming upon you, your wealth has rotten and it will ruin your fine clothes and have become moth eaten. Meaning yeah. some of you hoarded more, you, you spend more time mulling and thinking about your money and your riches than you think about God. So when he said, drop real quick, drop down into um, verse three at the end, he said, you have stored up your treasures in the last day when when it will do you no good, because a lot of you spend more time chasing after things than chasing after desiring the will of God and that desiring a relationship with him. So you have to ask yourself, will your riches, will your, you know, your goals of just being prosperous you know, why is it so desirable? More, why is riches and money more desirable than having a relationship with God? Knowing what he just spoke about, the consequences of you having that type of desire. Amen. Amen. That reminds me of the story of the rich man and Lazarus. When he went down to the pits of hell and he cried out for some water. Mm -hmm. Just to the, the drop of water, just to the drop of water on my tongue. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just a little yeah. bit. And now this rich man, when he died, he left everything. He, he couldn't take nothing with him. Mm -hmm. The family probably pulled and fought for it, whatever, or the government who have took his stuff, just like, like just like the rich today. They can't take anything with them. Mm -hmm. Families fight over it or the government take it. Mm -hmm. So now... We dealing with we worry about these earthly riches, then we don't forget about our soul. We forget about God's promise. Now these now these are the price we end up having to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, and we all get caught up with that financial thing. Look at my nice car, my gold chain, looking down at the poor, looking down, or maybe the homeless people sitting on the street looking down at me. All right, get away from don't touch me. Your pride gets in the way also with the riches. 
but this is some of the price that we have to pay. So and all you out here who's doing pretty good out there in your life, you got to just be mindful that you can't take it with you. And be mindful of how you treat people that who's as prosperous as you are. Amen. Anybody else have a question? Huh? Yeah, or I'd like to make like to make a comment on it. Stupid game come up. <laughs> I can't believe it. Anyway, I'm going to say, well, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. It reminded me of Mo when Moses, God told Moses to tell them to only take enough for what you need. Don't store up more than you need for your family. And because of that, they were disobedience. They had rotten food and everything else happened to them. Maggots and everything ate their food, and but just take enough for each family. And that's it. But they didn't listen. Your camera went off out the bud. I know. I'm stupid games on it. I can't get it off. Yeah. I'm working on it. Bear with Praise me. God. Take your time. Go ahead, uh, Minister Isaiah. Amen. Um, Apostle, um, you're going to read uh, 1 Timothy chapter um, 6, 6 through 10. Oh, she goes, sorry, you go. You got your hands. We answered the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, look you at that. You want mute? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, Pastor. I'm getting there. <laughs> wow, that mute button. Yeah, I know. But, yes, it's in trouble. So I just want to read. Social media, they still trying to be in the realm of rest. We back to work now. They no, they man, real yes, slow. Yes, yeah. It's great hey, for us, you know. Well, we had 30 days old. Oh, That's a long goodness. time in the realm, so I'm just trying to tell you. Lord Jesus. I just wanted to read to you um what my Bible says on the side here. I have the uh, New King James but, uh, Bible. It's the study Bible, and it talks mm -hmm. about um, James 5, 1 through 6. And it says on the side here, it says, James continues to denounce a pursuit of riches that disregards God and his purposes. He condemns any employer who treats his employees unjustly and promises judgment on all who oppress the poor. The rich pictured were clearly wealthy landowners, a class accused of economic exploitation and oppression from early times. James justified the condemnation of these richest land order, landowners, excuse me, landholders, it says, because they selfishly hoarded wealth, defrauded their workers, and lived self unjustly and oppressed the just. Amen. And if I can, can I read it from the New King James Version? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Um, Pastor Teresa went to seven, so I'm going to take it down to seven as well. It says, Come now. You rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mold your fields which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Verse 6 says, you have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. And 7 says, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Amen. To the readers, hears and doers of his holy and righteous word. And I read James 5, 1 through 7 from the New King James Version. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Even with that, even with that um, we talk about being patient to the poor. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes us even get caught up where we don't have anything, and we look at the rich people with the nice things, and we we, we cry and we ask God for these things. And but when we do that, we want it now a lot of times. Mm -hmm. God tells us to be patient, scripture tells us to be patient, you know. And um, God will give you to just do it because in His will for you to have these things, but we have to show up to the diligence of being patient, you know, and let God work. But you, we just need to just keep the faith. 
-hmm. They prayed up and let God handle the rest. And don't stress over the things you don't have. But we all have needs, but we can't stress over it. Let God do his work. Amen. And another thing, we talked about the uh, rich people can't take things with them. It mm -hmm. just made me think about I think an archaeologist. Mm -hmm. When they dig up, how many treasures they have they dug up? A thousand, yeah, a bunch of treasures, right? Where were yes. the owners? Where were the owners at? Dead and gone. Right. Dead and gone. Right. You know, right. If they ain't in the cafe, they, they, they went to the body dust. shriveled up to a, a fossil mm -hmm. tea. Yeah. Right. Ashes to ashes, yeah. dust to dust. They yeah. gone. So <laughs> thousand years later, thousand years later, somebody else got your treasure. Uh -huh. So you know, so you ain't never yeah. taken it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everybody so has Amen. Okay. Um, nobody have anything to say with that? Add to that? Um, read it from um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. You said 1 Timothy? Yes. Yeah. Chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. I can read that. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Amen, yes. Oh, boy. Amplified version is always social media. We just, I just love to amplify. It's just like you can't even get around it. The other versions are good, but mm -hmm. let me hit it from the yeah. amplified version. Amen. But godliness actually is a source of great gain when accompanied by contentment. That contentment, which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. For we have brought nothing into the world. So it is clear that we cannot take anything out of it either. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who are not financially ethical and crave to get rich with a complete greedy longing for wealth, fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction leading to personal misery last verse for the love of money that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierce themselves through and through with many souls. Amen. Somebody got a lot of feedback. Let's everybody go on mute until we speak. It's on you, Minister. Okay. Amen. Um, let's see where we at now. Anybody got a statement on that one? I could get out, well, I personally get out of that, that wrote down for like the cons to that is we go through temptation, we go through greed, we go through materialization, we go through distractions from spiritual and meaningful pursuits, potential for pride and ignorance. That's what we get out of being rich. Those are downfalls of being rich. So that's why I get out of that there. And so through all our riches, these those are what she some things she read in the scripture. I had to come to the scripture late, but I, it shows that through all things that we want, we go through the different strikes and through our greed, through our, greed, through our greed and, our, and our ignorance and, and wanting all this all this wealth. Uh, somebody else I'll elaborate on that. That's the truth. She has her hand up, Mr. Isaiah. Say again, then. Pastor Teresa has her hand up. Oh, yeah, I said, I thought I said, Pastor. Amen. Okay, I did. I'm trying to find the mute button. Okay, I just want to comment on the first verse, verse six. It says, according to what you just said, Minister Isaiah, it says, but godliness actually is a source of great gain when accompanied by contentment. That contentment, which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. The problem, social media and everyone on the virtual classroom is that when you have a desire to be rich and want more, this, that, and the third, you are not developing godliness if you say that you're a child of God. Because the God, because God said it in his word, godliness actually is a source of great gain. 
If you don't truly believe that, then you will not, you cannot make decisions and you cannot really say you love God or I'm living for the Lord. Because if you don't, if, if you're not understanding that godliness, like I, like I said, actually is a source of great gain when it's accompanied with contentment, meaning you cannot operate in godliness and strife and anger. You cannot even tell people you got, you're so godly and holy when your heart is not content. And especially if you're not content with your lifestyle. So see, those are things that we have to be honest about because it also says that contentment, which comes from a sense of inner confident. So now you have to put the spotlight on yourself. Like how confident are you in God? How confident do you believe that God is going to come through with everything that he says in his word or, 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 or anything that he says to you? How confident are you inwardly about the word of God? It goes back to the basic question. Do you truly believe? Not don't answer the question in a sense of because of what you was taught about the about, you know, the churches, the organization, which you grew up in your environment, because that is not that what we were taught. We still have freedom to choose because some things that we've taught, we've all rejected. Like our mama, some things your mother and father taught you as an adult, you you don't even do that no more. Or you don't even consider that to be um, important enough to do anymore. So, for example, your mama, your mom, you were brought up in a home where your mother taught you how to clean your room up like very neat. But now you live at your own home and not that it's not clean, but you're junkie. You don't hang your clothes no more like you used to do when you was living home. You don't put your shoes in the shoes rack. Now you just take your shoes because you figure, hey, this is my house. This is my, you know. So I just say all that to say that, like he said in the word, you will know when godliness, the character, you know, it's in you. Because what it says, a company with contentment, it is a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. Not based on man. Not based on your job, not based on nothing else. It is an inward thing accompanied with com, um, com contentment based on the sufficiency of God, meaning how much of God you want, how much you allow him in your life, how much control. Is he really Lord or is he just Savior? Amen. 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 On that note, too, as we gain some wealth or we well off, Sometimes us in the ministry too, we see that in the ministry all the time. When some people who are well off and they, and they show spouse, you see, you can see the arrogance in them. Yeah. They, they, they talk God out one side of their mouth, but they still talk arrogance out of the other side. They still, they look down. They, but they, I ain't just talking about the ministries. I'm just talking about people in the churches sometimes too. We, we get caught up with that poison of that almighty dollar or riches. And we, and sometimes we show arrogance. Even when we, when we talk in God, we show a lot of arrogance because we get unaware and we lose our, our senses of uh, the word of God. We you lose the, the godliness God. and the contentment. The sense contentment, yeah. And sometimes yeah. that happens in our churches too because I've seen it a lot, you know. So it just, it happens all across the board. And Amen. we kind of, that finances and that, that wealth and the, I got this you don't have, we tend to lose sight. Thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go. Can, ahead I, ahead. can, can I share okay. something? Okay. Okay. Um, Mom, I can't. I I can't get my hand up. I don't know why it's not working. I already oh. played with it enough. You um, know, to be next. What's that? I said somebody what? else had their hand up. But go ahead. My bad. This sorry, social media. I'm, we just. I'm sorry. It. I, I, I got to get back on. I can't raise yeah. it. So no, it's, but somebody um, already had their hand up too. But go ahead, Mister Isaiah. You're clear. Okay, go ahead, El El Marshu, Elder Marshu. God bless, God, God bless, bless, God bless. God bless. Contentment, satisfied. Let's 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 take it down a memory. Let's take it down a memory road. Amen. First, you know, I got to hit the ladies. I have to hit the ladies. I love y'all, but I got to hit the ladies. 
Hold up. I think that you get the question first. <laughs> before you, I meant I was asking you to give the question first. Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going based off the scripture. Oh, go, you going based off what I read? Did I read that? Okay, the question. Uh, oh, he'll, oh, yeah. Oh, so, okay. So he's on first Timothy. Okay. I, I thought you had a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Before I moved on, he wanted to ask what we just read already. Hey, Amen. Uh, Amen. Kid me. We, sometimes we're not satisfied of what we have. We want more. Ladies and gentlemen, first and ladies, how many pair of shoes do we have? We're not content with, with the shoes that we have. So we want more shoes. God is telling us to be content with what we have. But we find ourselves want more. We got to have the right shoes with the right outfit. We got the right to have the right purse with the right outfit. We have to have these things to match the men. We got to have the right suit. You know, got to have the right uniform, whatever it may be, we have to have the right things to match. The word said, don't be, it was telling us to be contentment to what we have. So many times we're not satisfied, so we want more. More. Yeah. Every time you turn around, we want more, just like myself. I have to put myself in now. I want content with the little things that I have. So I misuse those little things. Yeah. And so since, since I was misusing those little things, I went content. Now I'm not living that godly example because I want I want things my way, so I'm going to try to get more. Just like just like now at the job. Everybody tell me, you're not finna step down because you got that little raise. I say, all money ain't good money when it comes to my health. Yeah. I'm not finna allow Kroger's to kill me. So when I turn 62, I'm stepping down from being a full-time employee to go work part-time because I'm not finna allow the Kroger's to, uh, uh, to take my health. So what I'm just trying to say, social media and class, we have to be contentment to what we have. We got to be satisfied because if we're not, and what the word tells us, Pastor, if we if we don't help me out, Holy Spirit, if we don't appreciate the little things, God is not going to bless us with the big things. If we don't know how to use the little things that we have now, how do you expect God to give us? Those big blessings if we not contend with the little things and work with what we have. Just like the talents. The men with the talents. Everybody had a talent. But the one who had the least talent thought he was doing something right, but he was doing wrong because he didn't use the talent to what God gave it to him for. Mm -hmm. He wasn't content. So I just wanted to put that out there about contentment. Because like you said, uh 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 Minister Isaiah, you got you got leaders in the in the building and, and things and they're not content. They want more and more and more. And, and you notice, mm -hmm. I, I ain't trying to get off subject, but if you notice every per, per, person that got big money is 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 how can I put this? Help help me on the spirit. How can I put this? It's out of order. They want more and more. They were talking about Puff Daddy. How he did. All that money. Mm -hmm. People with all that money is miserable. They're not happy. Amen. So Amen. I, I, that's what I, I wanted to mention. Amen. I know, I'm glad you said we had a discussion about that today about for like uh, the miserable of uh, the, uh, the riches and the bosses we work for. I had worked for some some people pretty rich, and it seemed like every moment I looked at, they was always miserable, never smiling. Just, just they just tight spirited, just got that anger all the time. And you look at them sometimes, you say, "Well, you got you got 
all the money you need. Why are you looking so angry? But all that finance don't bring you don't bring you no happiness all the time. And for the ones who some who sometimes you ought to be happy for the things he give us and that we want more, but he wanna give you more, but he wants you well, I want you to appreciate what I give you so far first, because you haven't shown me that you deserve more. And um sometimes we get caught up with that too. Amen. Okay, Amen. Well, Elder, Elder Bud. Turn off your um, turn your mic off. There we go. We'll worry about the hand later. It says yes, the Bible says a lot about contentment. In Exodus 20, 17, God commanded the people to be not to covet and be content with what they had. That was like what I said before. They were told yeah. just to take enough bread and enough meat for one day or for the weekend or whatever, but not to take any more than that. Yeah. And when people did, they had spoil in their hands. It stunk. And it says contentment is a characteristic of children of God. That's in Philippians. Command people to do everything without complaining and arguing. You know, when we do things and we're committed to something, we don't need to get boasted and patted on the back because we do everything as unto the Lord. And it says, uh, uh, like Paul, for instance, contentment is grounded in a relationship with Jesus. Christian contentment comes from a relationship with Jesus. Contentment is a sin to be discontent with God. When people are discontent, they are questioning God, wisdom, goodness, sovereignty, and love. And Paul and Silas showed contentment. Paul and Silas showed contentment in every difficulty, circumstance, by singing and praising God when they are in prison. Amen. And look at Jesus. He didn't even have a place to lay his head. You know, they slept out on the ground, you know, and they ate figs and they ate apples and they ate these kind of things. They didn't have a meal every day, you know. They were, Jesus said, man will not live by bread alone, alone by bread itself, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, man will live by. That's why when Jesus fasted 40 days, that he was able to be able to, he was in tune with the spirit above him, the father, and he kept him, you know, where he was. He was able to do that. So Jesus, as we look at his characteristics more and more, we realize that's the way we should be, you know. And, you know, another thing he says, be holy as I am holy. That's impossible in the natural. That's very impossible in the natural. But in the spirit realm, when we cry out to God and ask God to help us, and to be with us, oh God. Every day we pray that. And then we have contentment. We're, we're solid. We're solid ground. Any other ground is sinking sand. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Hey. You know, Pastor Teresa, thank you, Elder Buff. Yep. I had my hand up for oh, a yeah, second. You, you dropped it. Blank it out, so I hope it, I, okay, I can hear uh, what I'm saying. Go ahead, uh, go minister. Minister is okay. Minister Rose, and then I go last. Okay, go ahead, man. All right, I'm gonna try to get this out before I blank out again. For some reason, to keep blanking out. Uh, okay, according to the scripture that you are um are on, but godliness actually is a source of great gain when accompanied with contentment. That contentment, which comes from the sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. Okay, the sufficiency of God, not the sufficiency of man, and that's the problem. Mm. People, uh, they, 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 they rely on the sufficiency of man and not the sufficiency of God, and they mm. consider that a great gain. We lost you all. Um, I know. I'm back again. It keeps on in and out. I don't know what's going on here. But anyhow, the um, it's saying that, uh, you know, a lot of times I always tell people that when you talk about riches and great gain and, and, uh, and everything abundance in the Bible, 
it's not always talking about monetary. It's no. talking about the thing, the spiritual things, the things of God. Yeah. We are to be rich in the spirit. We ought to be rich in the things of God, not the riches of this world, which all will be mm. fade away. It said yeah. the pecker worm's going to eat it up. It's going to rust away. Yeah. But what yeah. those things that are of God is going to last forever. Hallelujah. Amen. And then yeah. uh, it goes on, the next verse goes on to say, for we have brought nothing into this world, and it is clear that we cannot take anything out of it either. I learned that a long time ago. I don't worry about when I'm losing stuff because I have down through the years lost so much things moving. And I and, and, and the Lord told me just like I bless you to get it, then I can bless you to get more, even then. So I don't worry about it. People get all upset and all just uh, discombobulated because they done lost. You know, a a, a a heirloom they say it is, or mm -hmm. either um, a a clothing piece, piece of article, a uh, uh, a clothing article, or or mm -hmm. something. Oh, that that plate belonged to my mother. That Bible belonged to my mother. I'm I'm just I, upset and all this kind of stuff. I don't worry about it. Just no. like that, at that, the Lord will make sure He will give to me. I think about. All the time when when Paul speaks of how uh it whatsoever state he's in, he he will be content because he have been he have abound and he has been a base, and that's how we supposed to look at things. And then the uh, eighth verse says, "But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content." Now, and I tell you, I've learned to be content. Because I have gotten to the place in my life at a time where when it talk You'll be back. I, I blanked out, but I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Keep blanking out. I'm going to hurry up trying to wrap this up. I, I, I know that I have come to that place because I remember in 2009, I wasn't able to get up and, and, and go into the kitchen and get myself something to eat. I may not be able to do it all the time now, but I thank God for my brother, brother Isaiah, because he do cook. And and some food is good, some not. But I'm telling you, <laughs> 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 okay, it's, it's, it's good, but it don't mean it's like recorded. Years, so my liking. That's recorded. I, I, That's I, that. I, my my nephew was there in the home with him after my sister died. He somehow kept. Had, came to stay with me, but he was there in the home with me and he would cook. I mean, I ate slop, but I had to eat it to keep nourishment. Uh, either I don't, some of the stuff, he didn't even know what he was putting together, but I learned to be content because I knew I had to eat. Amen. And, and that's, and we would just be that because oh. She, she, um, she, she, um, we lost her again. She can stay there yeah. for a while. <laughs> it keep popping in and out. It's gonna go in and out. I'm sorry, y'all. But uh, <laughs> we gotta be grateful and thank the Lord for what we got on our place. And I, 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 I think about so many times that um, my nephew today, my what my niece's son, my great nephew, my sister's grandson. He thinks that every time his mom cooks something he don't like, he he can call me and have me, me to send cash up him some money. I said the devil is alive, and I just just recently I told him I said I'm gonna tell you like my mama would have told you, if you don't eat what's put before it, you starve, because I am not going to be. Paying for no extra food or either cooking no extra food. Mm -hmm. So my, you know, my thing is a lot of people are not grateful. And I think about Brother Bud talks uh, so many times about um, Apostle Tabunim and the little that they have and the, the how they give them to eat off of. We got to be content. They are, Tabu is content with what he get. And even when it comes to our financial 
it says, but those who are not financially ethical and cry, cry, crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth falls into temptations and traps. That's why all these folks out here selling drugs and stealing and going on because they try to get fast money and fast money don't get you nowhere. Even those that have attained and, and, and accomplished money. I'm going to tell it. I got a cousin that, well, two of them, I tell you, that was out there getting all that fast money and everything and stuff was out there selling drugs big time. One of them went to jail. The feds got everything. Got everything. And he ain't got nothing to show for it today. Now that he out on the streets. The other one was smart enough to put his stuff, everything he had in his grandmother's name. So when he came out, he started buying up all these houses and stuff going into real estate. And now he say, Money ain't easy like it was to come by now. He ain't got he ain't got what he had, regardless. And he's not he wasn't satisfied with what he had because he had had even himself two three homes. I'm telling you. But now he's involved down to one home. That's all he got. And even though you know the thing is, they it's it, it's gonna you know for only last a while. They, and then a lot he misery in misery because he said he found out that you know the government want to get their part you got to pay taxes on this you got to pay taxes on that you get that, 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 that and he that money gonna run out sooner or later that money he had stashed and had his, his, his grandma at home it's gone he ain't got it like that no more so I, i'm telling you we got to learn to be content for the love of money the love of money that's what people get it wrong. A lot of people say money, but it says for the love of money, that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil. And some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. And I can tell you that right now today, we can look at a whole lot of them, the 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 preachers, the uh, televangelists mm -hmm. that that have fallen from grace because they weren't walking in the way of, of the Lord. They were it may have started out at one time walking in the way of the Lord, mm -hmm. but then they got greedy and started just getting the money. I will talk to you after meeting. And I can tell you, uh, I, I don't want to start naming folks, but I want to tell Jim Baker, even though he came back and he wrote a book and apologized and asked the Lord and everybody to forgive him, but he was one of them. So it's proven fact right here. I'm going I'm to cut it off. I'm, I'm too long for my, my thing being to cut off again, but <laughs> that's all I, I need to say. I'm sorry. I just came in. No, I couldn't good. get in on the other class. So I came on in on this. All right. Let me say this before you bring back memory for like contentment. I remember as a kid having to eat syrup sandwiches, butter bread sandwiches. Me and my mother in the, in the, in the food line getting Government cheese and powder milk and powder egg. I was we wasn't complaining at all. I've never met my mother. I've never met my mother really complaining. Love that cheese. Love the best cheese. I, we, we didn't have anything, but we could chip. Maybe we were just naive, but I feel her had a pretty good childhood, even though we didn't have all the things that a lot of these people with, and children had. Had days where I, was, I, looked, I woke up on Christmas morning, they have a, a single package up there, you know. So. But I was all right at the well, and I know my, I was at a young age, I knew my mother struggled. So I, we can't hear you, Minister Isaiah. Say something. You can you hear me? We can hear Not you. Not there, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. 
You ain't hear nothing I said? We ain't hear until the tell you know, You got to come back around to that one. Oh, Let me okay. hear you for time's sake. Okay, uh, yeah. Social media and um, uh, the classroom. All I wanted to say and to ponder on verse 9 where it says, but for those who are not financially ethical and crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth, falls into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, leading to personal misery. We can also go as far as this in far as social media and everyone, far as relationships and friendships. Some of you long thinking that you need more money or you need certain type of lifestyle, certain type of things to attract friends, to attract a mate. Don't you know like it just said, that crave to get rich with a compulsive greediness because you're trying to please everyone and please yourself. You're not with a, with that type of compulsive and greediness as a man. You're not going to get a wife. You're going to get a knife. It's it clearly just said it. you're going to you're going to attract. You're going to fall into a temptation because of the things you're thinking that because you need to be the provider and provide her with all of these luxuries, she's going to stay. No, because her spirit is only going to be attracted to the luxuries because it just clearly said that if you have the compulsive greediness, if you're, if you're motive, if you are, if your whole focus, thank you, Holy Spirit, that's the word focus. If your whole focus is to get rich you know, okay, I'm gonna get rich. I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna get this. Then I'm gonna get the woman. I'm gonna get the wife. I'm gonna pray to God. God, you're not gonna get no wife because your motive of the heart, your whole plan, your whole focus is all wrong. Because soon as you get hit a hard time or you lose that money, you won't lose the woman because see, you're looking for a woman to accompany the appetite of your greediness for the lifestyle that you're going after if it makes sense because and it's rich women too you don't see and it's very rare for a rich man to really fall in love with a poor woman it is very rare that a rich woman will fall in love with a poor man you know why because your whole focus is going to be She's poor. She only wants my stuff, which could be all wrong. But because of your, because like the Bible says, because of your crave to get rich, because you're focused, that's all you're thinking. You're not just thinking the woman, but you're thinking everybody, all your friends, they just with me because I got money, because I got a big house, because I got a car. And see, you cannot discern the spirits on people rightly. Why? Because like it says in ver verse one, you're not content, which is a sense of a inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. You're not being, you're not, you're not, um, when it says based on the sufficiency of God, you don't really believe. You don't believe that God can really supply for you. So you think that only you can supply for yourself because of your gifts, because you got a job, because you got connections. And so when a rich person like we're seeing of the world, and I'm just going to go here, but I ain't going to stay long. Why are they falling? Because God is not involved. That's bottom line social media. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are a pastor, a bishop, a minister. And then if you want to look at the world, I don't care if you are the president, you are a, um, a federal leader, actor, you know, music person. The reason you cannot hold on to the money and the lifestyle because you never, your focus was never with God and you never kept God inclusive anyway. He was never sufficient enough for you. And a lot of you, because you notice that when people start losing, now all of a sudden you hear the word of God. G-O-D come out their mouth more than ever. But when they were on top, you don't hear God. You don't, you don't hear, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't hear them sentences. Even And you need to pay attention, all of you on the virtual classroom and social media, even for those that you connect with and you are friends with. When things are good, you don't hear nothing about God. All they want to talk about is trips, buying more stuff, hanging out, let's eat nice dinners, this, that, and the third. 
But then if they get sick, if they have a financial crashing, if they got to start hustling again, now they come to you, man, pray for me. Oh, now you got, now you having, you're saying, now you want to do spiritual stuff. But every other night, you got a whole, you having a whole bunch of gatherings or a whole bunch of parties at the house. So see, that goes with relationships and marriages. You do not see. And you know what? I'm going to go this further and then I'm done. Even in, even in the remnant. Most so-called, let's go with the prosperity one. So-called prosperity preachers. You don't see a rich one. God allows them to have riches. To, tell, to ask God, find me a wife, and then God leads them to a poor woman. They not they, they have a struggle with if uh, unless they are truly spiritual, they're going to have a struggle with that. And the and then only on the basis if, for example, a rich man will be with a poor woman is if they both started off poor. You see what I'm saying? If they was both poor and they was they've been together, and then he, you know, she helped him to get rich, or he just, you know, was able to get good opportunities and he became mm -hmm. rich. Okay, he'll keep her. Why? Because he's been with her for a long time. You see what I'm saying? He's been with her for a long time. The same with a woman. If she has a she's she's financially stable, whatever, she, if she's single, she's not gonna be looking to date no poor man. She's not gonna be, oh. she's not gonna be looking to date, no, she's not gonna look to date the garbage man. Even though he may have his job, may be the garbage man, but he may have his own little car and may have a little apartment. No, 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 no. He's not good enough because she's looking at he's not he's not up on my level, but he has a job like you got a job. He work he whatever regardless of it. But see, that's the problem that we have. And like Minister Rose, it wraps up to say it's the love of money. So that that social media should let you. Look at your heart. You should be analyzing your motives. When it comes to money, how do you feel about it? If you like this, you all tight-handed, guess what? You're going to attract people that's going to always try to take from you. They're going to be always behind your back trying to find a an, an weak area. And that's and the reason why I say they, because if you do this, that's how the enemy, he's going to get those people. He's going to make sure that he tempt you with those that say out their mouth they love you. But they are all looking for a way to just take what you have. Because when you're sick, you, ain't, you don't see them around. Mm -mm. You don't see the party people. When you're going through grievancy, you don't see the party people. Mm -mm. I, I, and then look, if they do call, they're only going to call for five seconds. Man, I just called to see what you was doing. Oh. You all right? You, you sleep? Okay. Talk to you later. They not going to hold no conversations too much because they waiting for you to get better. And then once you get better, you raise spend that money. Amen. Amen. Elder Bud got his hand up. Yes, I'd like to say three things. First of all, you mentioned our brother Tabu. Uh, like I said, what would buy a groceries for a week now the government has cut it back to where they can't even make it through the week. I saw them grinding seeds. He showed me the land. He showed me grinding little pellets and putting it in stew. And, you know, they're in that area. They don't know what it is to be where we are. Okay. Now, look at Elijah. He was fed by the raven and he was in a cave and he was water and food was by a bird. Look at John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness. He was there, you know, that's how he live, wild honey and all that. But, you know, the thing is, if you look around your house and the things that you really thought you needed at that time and they're still sitting here and you don't use them anymore, one reason, because you can't hear as well, you can't see as well, you can't, you know, it's just like your whole life is going down the drain. It's like put money in a hole in your pocket. It's got just hit, falls out. But, you know, that's the thing. You know, we got so much stuff, so much stuff. And I look around and I thought, I had to have that. I had to have that back then. Now it sits here and collects dust. Except the word of God. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Pastor Robin? 
Amen. Since everybody was on contentment, I said I had looked at um, my Bible because it's a women's study Bible. And it talks about the question in here, is it really possible to be content? So I wanted to read this as I was highlighting it because uh, it uh, had a lot of good points in there. It said contentment is the ultimate acceptance of yourself, your surroundings, your past and your future. Many women are full of discontent. They seek happiness from others, accumulate material possessions to find joy, move to a new home, or marry another husband in search of contentment. The Christian woman should learn to be content in Christ, like in um, in the scripture that we shared, um, the First Timothy uh, 6, 6 to 11, it has the reference verses. And then it says, though contentment seems elusive, you can be content as you trust in God, relying in him to provide what you need. You must be confident in yourself. You must be grateful for your family and your friends. And it says Paul challenges you to seek godliness with contentment with whatever you have. And let's see, it says if you, if you truly desire to follow God, he will teach you to be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So I thought that was really, really interesting in, in my huh. Bible, the study yeah. Bible about contentment. Yeah. Amen. So yeah. I just Can I just say one thing to that? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. I've really, you know, that really struck a chord with the fact though, because, and the, it goes with today and the problems that we're seeing. Of course, the manifestation of the Bible is true. Man, this generation, and the generation really really from 1980 going to now that gap mm -hmm. they're very selfish selfish yeah. they're not you don't see contentment too much because mm -hmm. even between the ages of 18 to 30 now yeah they're not content more, 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 more. why is that it is because of the environment the, the the environment and the community that they're in we keep pushing our children and pushing each other to do more to get more why get more clothes? Why get a bigger house? Why get 55, 20? You got to have two and three, four, five cars. Why are we doing that? Because at the end of this life, if God chooses to take you, call you on home, you, you, you just die. Who want to be left behind dealing with all that mess? That's real talk family out there. Okay. And whether you leave behind money or not, money even if you if you're wealthy and you leave it to your family, they going if they don't get along, honey, you're gonna be long and gone. They're gonna fight and kill each other over it. Right. But when it comes to your stuff, you're talking about underwears, limb room sets, you know, just you know, jewelry, all and all that. That's work getting rid of. Yeah, you could pack it up, give it to salvation. That's the point. You gotta pack it up because you dead and gone. You ain't packing it up. Mm -hmm. So that's what God, you know, when we're talking about contentment. I look at, I'm content because I look at, I ain't trying to accumulate more than I'm going to be willing to work for if I can cut, if I had to work, do it for real. real talk. Every, it's like every two, two, you know, every other month I'm cleaning house. Cause I'm like, you know what? Cause even if God called me home or whatever, or even if you don't, the point is I still have to clean up. You see what I'm saying? I still even, and like you said, Minister Rose, cause I used to hate it too. When I used to move to a new house, whatever, cause you pack, you got to move all this stuff. Then when you unpack, you throw out stuff and then you turn around, still get new stuff. Mm -hmm. God is like, I'm confused. <laughs> That's what God be saying. I'm confused. I move you to new land. You know what I'm saying? You got new house stuff. Some old stuff is worth salvaging. He don't have no problem with that. But then you throw out stuff to go back to replace the exact same thing that you just threw out. So why do you go back and get the same thing? So if you threw away a blue shirt, but you go back to Walmart to get the exact blue shirt, what was wrong? And, it, and if it was really nothing wrong with the first one, some of us say, oh, because that shirt, oh, I had it over five years, but it's still in good condition. So God is confused. Like, OK, but then you turn around and get the same blue shirt because it's a newer shirt. He like, I'm confused. But then you keep asking me to give you more money when you can't even make a simple decision in your head about the stuff that you accumulate and have. And then like, um, I guess uh, Elder Marshall said about 
choosing and clothing. Yes, some of us, yeah, we do. Oh, everybody on here got more than two pairs of shoes. Everybody on here did. And some of you out there on social media, everybody got more than two pairs of shoes. But the problem is, God is like, he don't even care about how many shoes you got. He's looking, he, he looking at the motive of your heart to the point, if I tell you to give away, you got 10 pairs, I tell you to give away five, is you going to grumble and bicker at me because I told you to give away five? That's because, like the word just said, you're not sufficient in God and you're not content. You're not sufficient in God and you're not content. And so we have to understand, and it's not just with only finances, it's even in relationships. Some of you are not content with the partners and your friends that you have because it all starts with the motive to why you want to be their friend or why y'all connected in the same place. Ain't that right, Apostle? Amen. That's right, Amen. Pastor. Amen. Um, before I go to your um, minister roles, did y'all hear me earlier what I was saying? We ain't heard the intel part. That was it. You well, can go speak- wherever, wherever your mind pick up at, just hit it with. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was just, I think I remember saying, um, you can find contentment go. I remember eating syrup sandwiches, uh, fried butter sandwiches, being me and my mother being in the, in the line getting the government cheese and stuff like that. You know, I didn't know, but I was content. I didn't even see my mother complain, you know? We was content with what we, what we had. And um, as I got older, I recognized our struggles. There was a lot of things she tried to buy me. I just turned down because she was forced, she was pushing to do that for us. So I always been pretty much content. I guess I get that from my mom because she was always pretty content too. With that. That's probably why I don't ask for a whole lot now. And as far as like gifts, I give a lot of stuff away. We not, even I don't really have nothing. You know, I don't see people that, um, I thought I gave a pair of sneakers away not too long ago down the road. I, but I've always been there. I'm content. If, I, if, if I'm comfortable with something, I'm content. I don't need all that extra stuff. You know? If it, I get blessed with it, fine. If not, I'm content. Amen. But hold up, Minister Isaiah. Let's try this for the day. But let somebody, let, and out there, social media and families, I, mm-hmm. I challenge you, cook a grilled cheese sandwich for dinner for your kids and see what they tell you. Oh, man. For, for, those, for those that are six years to 12 years old, you let them eat a grilled cheese sandwich or a hot dog and cheese sandwich saying that's all for dinner. What they going to tell you? Uh Uh-uh. They want to go to dirty McDonald's Mm -hmm. or dirty Burger King because they ain't eating no grilled cheese or no syrup sandwiches or stuff like that. No, they ain't eating. Y'all know nothing because y'all, because you know why? Because us parents, those of you, you try to quote unquote, raise them on, as you would say, finer foods and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. some of you don't even investigate some of the places that you take them. They the food ain't right. Right. But yet you're gonna like you said, Mr. Borva. I, I mean the old grandma's back in the day for real. Grits. Mm-hmm. Try to get somebody, try to give a child from six to twelve some grits. They're gonna look at you like you crazy, not us. No, I we had grits like, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We'll eat some grits. Yeah, we don't want that. But, What's that other stuff? Yeah, mush. Uh-uh, they ain't mush. They go to pop. They go to Popeyes and Domino's, and you want to eat big pizzas and all that. Yeah. Y'all know nothing about no grilled cheeses, no syrup sandwich, no peanut butter on a spoon for a snack. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like, y'all know nothing. <laughs> have some Kool Aid. Have some Kool Aid and a grilled cheese and peanut butter on the spoon. Tell them that's all they get for the day. We was good. Right. I remember we those. Good. Yeah. Y'all know that man, you make man you not tell those kids that. <laughs> and then and then those that we shared in the neighborhood when you know when neighbors were neighborly oh. when you see the neighborhood kids, I would come outside with with uh with the peanut butter, um the uh jar of peanut butter. Everybody had their own spoon. We all was eating peanut butter together, sitting on the curb. We was mm-hmm. good playing yeah. jumping rope. Mm-hmm. Amen. I just wanted to add the pastor is you talk about you threw out stuff when you moved. No, I mean I lost stuff when I moved. My mm. nephew and them left a whole lot of stuff over in the house. And my uh, uh a friend of mine, she said, I just went by and saw your uh dining room uh chairs set on the out on the curb. Nothing I can do. I was two hours away. Mm-hmm. I moved and I stored some things in my uh, girlfriend's basement. 
husband did not know. She didn't let him know that my stuff was going to be stored down there. So he got an attitude. You know what he did? Went down there. She said he never did nothing like that before with a water hose. Well, my stuff, I had stuff was milled, dude. I had brand new dress down there. So, so and, and stuff, you know, things that I had. It was just, you know, every time my ex-husband, he left some things over in the basement to my, oh, I'm coming back to get them. They ain't going to need no they down there. Da, 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 da. He kept on saying it. But how you going to come back and get it? You couldn't even get it back in the house. So I lost some things that way. So, you know. And then things get broken as you move and stuff like that. But the Lord mm -hmm. made me content. I said, I ain't worried about it. As much stuff yeah. I lost in the move. I'm telling you, when I moved from Missouri to Florida, I oh had my some God, things. When you moved from a state to state. Yeah. I had some things in uh, um, a sister's uh, garage. And it's, it's locked. She said, don't nobody supposed to know how to get in there. And a whole lot of my stuff get went missing. She said, it was in there. I don't know what happened to it. She said, it was like one minute was there, one minute it wasn't. And I'm mm. like, wow. And she brought, you know, she brought down what all the stuff that she had when she came with her things and stuff. But hey, what can I do? Ain't nothing I can do about it. And I learned to feel it. And Lord, then bless me to get it over again. Like and yep, that's how we have there. to be satisfied with that you know i don't want to be like the man that um they talk about in the bible he's steady building more barns to store all his goods and then the lord called them home and guess I what let's go for yeah. it that's still in relationship too some of y'all y'all yeah. mm -hmm. misuse people yeah you misuse friendships and people and then you got to keep starting over to make new friends and it's all because of the motive but yet you don't appreciate the people and the friends that you are connected to. But then when God, like I said, it starts with your motive. When you're greedy, you gonna get greedy spirits attached to you. They're going to come for you because you're going to fall. Like the Bible just said, you're going to fall into that temptation of greed. And when you fall, when you're greedy, you're disconnected from God. So if you're a greedy man, but you may be saved and you'll be praying for God to send you, a godly woman or a godly wife, he ain't sending nothing because the Bible says when a man finds a wife, so God ain't sending nothing. You got to go find according to your relationship with God. And guess what? By the spirit, because you're connected to God, you'll know. But some of you, because of the greed what's in your heart, just because if a woman says something nice to you, automatically, oh, that's the one. And then you throw your heart out there, and some of you throw it out there too soon. Yeah, you need to you need to be with it before you even be co fully committed. You need right now this day and age, you least got to be with them two or three years. Year one ain't even getting it no more because look at how the Bible is. Because what did the Bible says? Men and women are starting to become lovers of themselves. So that means they ain't becoming. They not a lover of you. They don't love you. They're becoming lovers of themselves, meaning if a if a man or a woman saying they're interested in you, trust me, you better check their motive. And if God is not inclusive, already inclusive in their life, you already know you get right here for some trouble. If they're not spiritually connected to God, if they don't respect God and respect your spiritual growth, you already get right here for trouble. I don't care what I don't care how much they say they love you. You find I'll never hurt you. Guess what? They may they may be they may have good intentions not to hurt you, mm -hmm. but they are because if they're not spiritually connected and, and, and like the word just said, they're not sufficient and content. Even with their decision making, it's going to affect you because you're in this relationship or courtship with this person. Y'all better be careful in these last and evil days. God is still, trust me, God is still in the making of bringing, you know, woman and man to become one. Because he said it since the beginning of time. That's why he made woman for man. Oh, he's still in the business and he hold marriage really high. But some of y'all do not get into your word enough to know about the covenant of marriage. And y'all keep trying to make a marriage based off of what you've learned or what you've seen. And some of y'all, and I call them worldly marriages. They're not godly marriages. 
you know, somebody hurts your feelings, or if your partner hurts your feelings, you ready to divorce them. Oh, okay, because they fussed at you now, they holler. Okay, I'm going to divorce. Oh, but when they speak nice to you, whatever, and all and all that, okay, it's like, oh, you're a keeper. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You don't even speak nice to God, or you some of y'all don't even spend time with God, but God still is a keeper, He hasn't forsaken you. But you forsake your mate or forsake your friends too. Praise God. Contentment. Back to you, our Minister Isaiah. Very good job. Very good Thank job. You. That's all. Uh, it's been a good service, a good class tonight. Thank everybody. Thank everybody on social media who visit us tonight. And um, we're going to have um, Minister Rose do the announcement for us. That's because she, she threw a little shade earlier. So that... <laughs> we back social media. He putting her to work. Putting her Woo! to work. She worked last night on the prayer call and she working again. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. He said I threw a little shade. Nah, I was just being honest, brother. I love you, though. You know, I told you. I was like, ooh, I, did you lose the salt box in there? <laughs> like, you're on it. You got you yesterday, Pastor. Now she's jumping on me. Well, she, yeah, she got to shake that rust off. Go ahead. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> the announcements are as follows. Uh, we ask that you all come back out on tomorrow night and join us as um, our very own Pastor Teresa Vinny will be our Bible study teacher. And Boy that's love. at 7 o'clock. <laughs> and that's every Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock we have Bible study. Amen. Um, we here um, we, we, we soldiers, we have an email address that you can send all your prayer requests too as well as a um a voicemail where you can send your prayer request and that email address is soldiers on fire for christ at gmail.com that once again is soldiers on fire for christ at gmail.com you know there's no breaks or nothing in the uh, in no email address so don't i can't get it you you don't put no space in between soldiers on fire for christ.com and we also no capitals. Like no capitals. It's just oh. old so five. If you type in in, in the um, uh, email address, it doesn't matter for the email address. It's the password oh, for okay. emails and stuff that is sent. It, I got it, you. It, okay. Okay. I understand. All right. And we also have the the uh, voicemail for our prayer requests. And that number you can call is 641-715-3900. That number again for our prayer voicemail for you to leave a message that someone will get back to is 641-715-3900. And we have an extension and that extension is 640-469-POUND. Again, that's extension 640-469-POUND. And please leave uh, a phone number or some kind of way that you want us to get back in touch with you. Okay. Amen. Amen. Your prayer, along with your prayer request. Amen. Good. Amen. And we, we also have other events that do be pent on our page, Soldiers on Fire for Christ Facebook page or either any of the members here. You can go on their Facebook page. It's pent at the top normally. Then you will see the events that we have, such as we have our men and women's panel discussion as well as our combined panel discussion as well as our um, what is it? Our Greek meet. I mean, I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> meet meet <laughs> that is held every last Tuesday of the month. If it's the fourth, it may be the fifth. It depends on how uh -huh. many, you know, Tuesdays is in the month. And same with the um the the uh oh, I'm trying to say. <laughs> It's the same time as the Bible studies. That's at 7 o'clock. Everything that we have in the evening is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then our uh, the only thing that are a different time is when we have our panel discussions. Our men and women combined panel discussion is at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
as well as our men. I mean, 12. I'm sorry. Ooh, I'm messing this all up. It's 12 noon. Praise God. Don't laugh at yeah. me, brother. <laughs> this side yeah, that I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. We're taking notes, right? It's 12 <laughs> noon. For men. Our men and women's combined panel every other Saturday of the month. And then mm -hmm. our men's panel discussion the opposite Saturdays, you know, month, you know, the area of the month at 12 noon. But the women panel, see, we we, we special. We get to have that at 1 o'clock. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just had to say that. That's all. At 1 p.m. Of Eastern course you did. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Also, we here at Social Empire for Christ have partnered with St. Jude's Foundation to help stop out this disease you, that read so many babies that are some de uh, undeserving. They're not Thank you, Jesus. they haven't done nothing. They haven't even experienced life yet, but they have these this cancer that is eating up their lives. So we ask you to help me this goal that the Lord has laid on the pastor heart of one million dollars and just seek the Lord and ask the Lord what would he have you to give All right. so now I ask you to dig deep into your hearts when you do this and make sure that the, you're being led by the Lord yeah. and when you go on our pages or either the group page you will see uh, the flyer at the end of the flyer you know, we will have, it's underneath a little boy in a green t-shirt that's the link. You just tap onto that and it'll take you straight to St. Jude Foundation page. And once you send out the amount that you want to give, it goes directly to the St. Jude Foundation. We at Soldiers on Christ don't see this money at all, but they will send you a message and let you know that they have received your donation. So I'm asking you to please help us stop out this childhood disease of cancer. And every little bit helps. It may, the million dollars ain't nothing but a drop in the bucket, but it will help along the way. Okay. So we ask you to govern yourselves accordingly. These have been our announcements. May God bless wow. Amen. What Amen. a meeting, Amen. praise Amen. God. Thank you, Mel. Social media, man. Wow. Well, you can tell we all we was on rest mic. But shit, everything will run smooth. <laughs> you know, we just coming off rest mic. It's a, we but Amen. just keep praying for us and love on us, but we back. Praise we, God. Amen. You know, Social you media. gotta wake up. God is he gonna wake us up, but praise God and we thank you all. Amen. Social media, don't forget tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Our pastor Teresa oh, Vinny will be on with him. Amen. Oh, yeah. And in this, in this, we got something special for y'all this month. It's Women's Month on Thursday. We listen to the powerful women on Thursdays through the prayers. I mean, um, your souls are feeling down. Y'all better be on Thursday. Praise God. Prayer warriors on Thursday. So um, at 7 o'clock Thursday, make sure y'all be there. If you're feeling down and low and feeling hurt, That's good. why is you not to miss this? You got some powerful sisters on there. Amen. So Amen. I pass three to take us out in prayer. Yeah. I sure will. And also Amen. for the prayer call, Minister Isaiah, and social mm -hmm. media, you do not need a code. You can call straight in because I know that some phone uh, carriers, you know, with certain um, prayer call, you know, like the conference call that we're on, some people have where they have a, you know, access code. Our prayer line is just you call straight in. It don't matter what your yeah. area is. You should be able to get in and listen in on our prayer call every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, again, I come to you thanking you so much for this. Our first Bible study session with Minister Isaiah, Lord God, uh, from coming off of the month of September resting. Lord, we do not take it lightly. The rest that you have given us, you have spoken to all of us together and separately and you've manifested a lot of things to prepare us to continue to walk out if you give us these last three months of 2024 the month of october the month of november and the month of december and so lord god we do not take it lightly any day because any day that you give us above ground it's always and so we praise and honor you right now for being with us and being with our social media family and bless those that will take the time out to view this recording, Lord God. Bless those that 
will share it, Lord God, and hopefully they will come and meet and greet with us because we you allow us to have it every month so that we can fellowship and we can continue to spread the gospel across all the areas through social media, through virtual contact in the name of Jesus. We thank Amen. you, Lord God. But most importantly, Lord God, so that we can be excellent, effective representatives of you. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins, sins that are known and unknown. And if there are anything in us and around us and connected unto us and any people that is not pleasing in your sight, Lord, give us your strength. Give us your mouth to remove those things, to say it in love if we have to remove people because it's not beneficial for our growth, for us to continue to grow, to be all what you created to be and not what the world or people think that we should be. And so Lord, you, Lord. Us, as we are preparing to leave this platform, but never leave in your presence. And when we pray oh, tonight, again, yes, Lord, Lord God, as we wind down our homes, we thank you for the angels that's already encamped around our homes to protect, yes, defend and preserve them from anyone that may have a devil spirit in them to want to try to break into somebody's home, to try to break Break into somebody's wow. Lord God, we annihilate that in thank the name Jesus. of Jesus because the devil is a defeated foe. Yes, and so we just thank you, Lord God, for you being patient with us, Lord God, and help yeah. building us with your word. So when we speak it against any demonic attacks, he has to flee. No Hallelujah. weapon against anyone, any of the leadership at Soldiers on Fire for Christ, the members, the partners, anyone that soon, all the people that you may bring in, and even those that have left, Lord God, I annihilate, Lord God, Praise no Jesus. weapon formed against us will ever prosper, and any tongue that rise shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. So we thank you again for this time, Lord God. We thank you for the edification and the tools and, you know, to get back in process, to get back in tune with you so we can help serve and pray for your people. And we thank you again for trusting us as a leadership team. Thank you for using Minister Isaiah. Oh, yeah. Trusted him tonight with our spirits yeah. to give us the word and give us the tools yeah. that you have embedded in him. And so, Lord, help us to continue to apply it correctly in our lives and to share it and edify and encourage others and to win okay. souls for you. So continue to guide us to the souls that you trust us with. And we know, Lord, we don't take it lightly and we're going to do all that we have the ability to do to be excellent, effective representatives of you. We honor you. We respect you. We love you highly. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything. We are truly content with everything. And if we thank lay down Lord. tonight, Lord God, but if you decide to give us tomorrow, we will continue to strive to be better than we was the day before. In your you. name. And we thank you and we love you. And we just give you all the glory. Hallelujah. And we give you all the honor for it. And yes. we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. To God. I just Amen. wanted to tell you all to pray for my Aunt Barbara, the 95-year-old. Uh, she said that she called me real quickly. She said she found out that her bank account has been drained. Somebody then hacked her account. Minister mm -hmm. asked if the recording is off. I'm stopping now. <laughs> no, I thought you know. Yeah, oh, I, that's why usually we cut it off. I didn't hear it say, "Oh, I didn't want to put that okay. on there like that." Pray for it on social media. Yeah, we're doing better. <laughs>